Welcome to this Liverpool versus Ajax tactical analysis. We'll be looking at how Liverpool built up deep, their 2-4-4 possession, their midfield possession, as well as how they changed it when Nunez and Firmino came on. And then with Ajax, we're going to focus on their flexibility. And with that, let's get into it. Moving to Ajax's tactics, starting with their deep build-up. They had variety when building from deep. With their short goal kicks from the centre-back, typically Bassi, into the goalkeeper, they were looking to draw Liverpool's 4-3 press higher and then play a longer pass over that press either into the wide midfielders or a little chip dinked pass into a fullback. With longer goal kicks, the goalkeeper was looking for those wide midfielders, typically Tadic on the right hand side, with the fullbacks pushing as high as possible to help contest or support the second balls. They weren't just playing long though, Ajax was especially happy to play through the Liverpool press, with the Ajax defenders varying their positions to maintain those passing angles. Players who were especially pronounced in this fluidity were the centre defensive midfielder and centre back of Alvarez and Timber who often swapped roles from centre-back to centre-defensive midfielder and back again to make pressing them or tracking them very difficult. Other players that also swapped positions but not as frequently and more towards the later stage of the game were Tadic and Berghaus, with Berghaus initially starting as a CAM but then taking more of a right-wing role in possession as the game went on. In midfield possession, Ajax played in a 4-1 or a 3-2. This was extremely fluid with Alvarez often dropping to central centre-back as Liverpool sought to press on Ajax passbacks. Another example of his fluidity was when you'd see Ranch come off his right hand side into a right sided centre defensive midfield position as play developed on the left hand side and Ajax were happy to retreat when Liverpool sought to ramp up the pressure given how comfortable everyone was in possession and it's really difficult to extol the virtues of Ajax's one touch pass and move football highly enough it was really great and it allowed them to be able to develop an advantage on the near side through the sporting runners and then potentially switch to the far side and with that let's have a look at the example. Of course key to to Ajax's play, their total football, every player on the pitch is comfortable on the ball and Pass Veer was very comfortable on the ball, willing to wait as long as possible. He was helped out by the positioning of his defensive unit who were constantly looking to put themselves in advantageous positions for him to pass into. So instead of a more obvious deeper position, we will have them kind of vary their position so that there are multiple passing lanes. Of course, this is a 4-3-3 press by Liverpool with Liverpool's centre forwards looking to stay relatively narrow and mark the centre backs and centre defensive midfielder. On this occasion, Diaz is the one tasked with marking Alvarez. Pass Diaz's pass from deep is quite exceptional actually. It goes all the way to Taylor who's being tracked by Fabinho but it goes past him into Berghaus beyond him and from there the Ajax forwards are looking to get on their bikes and get in behind. Berghaus plays the ball out wide into Bergvine and then looks to follow his pass and get into a high position. Whilst Liverpool's centre midfielders, especially here the wide centre midfielder is looking to support the fullback and on the far side if when they were pressing the wide centre midfielders would look to try and help uh, press the fullbacks in those wide spaces and so Harvey earlier in combination with Trent are able to deflect that pressure that attack on the right hand side and we get to see Liverpool set up in that 4-3-3 with uh, three in midfield and your three forwards. Of course, this is Ajax, so clever positioning. So whilst Alvarez had moved across to try and support build up on this left-hand side, the right back, Rensch, had looked to come inside and provide a quasi right-sided centre defending midfielder. Liverpool are able to push Ajax's defensive unit deeper and deeper. But of course, with Ajax's pass and move play, Liverpool don't want to go too gung-ho. Jota initiates the press, pressing towards the goalkeeper, who passes into Bassi and he tries to play an immediate pass out into wrench but on his right foot that ball goes beyond wrench and out for a throw in but this is a good example of Liverpool being able to put pressure in a very specific way so here with Bassi who's right footed putting him on his left foot it prevented Ajax from being able to pass out the back whilst we didn't see it here on occasion Alvarez will take opportunities where Liverpool step up their press to drop into a central centre position or swap roles with Timber Simicas takes a throw in on this left hand side combining uh, with Diaz and Thiago and this is Thiago's role on this side um, using a little bit of a body feint and his long range passing ability to be able to spread play to the far side with Trent and then on this side we see what his opposite in uh, Harvey Elliott will do which is relatively similar except without the long range passing with him looking to combine with the right side forward and full back this being a few moments later where Matip I received the ball steps out allowing Trent to push up into a higher position in this right hand half space with Salah holding the width and Harvey Elliott a little bit deeper allowing them then to combine and try and hopefully take advantage of this space and so that's what we see here with Salah coming inside whilst Trent makes that inside underlapping run and Harvey Elliott makes that overlapping run with Trent and Salah looking to combine here centrally. On short goal kicks, Liverpool 
Liverpool could draw Ajax higher up the pitch, allowing Alexander Arnold to roam, typically into that right hand half space. On one occasion, he ended up at centre forward. A fruitful means of Liverpool progressing from deep into midfield possession was through either of the centre backs, but typically Matip driving from deep with Ajax's players looking to track their men. The centre back on the ball was able to progress 10, 15, maybe 20, 30 yards up the pitch, and as an Ajax player had to leave their man, Matip typically would then pop off a simple pass into a play between the lines. Next, in Liverpool's 2 4 4 midfield shape, we're going to focus mostly on centre midfielders. The fullbacks doing their typical thing, so Anderson Arnold looking to try and pop up in a right hand side half space and whipping across, and Simicast being a little bit more direct on that left hand side, looking to try and overlap or underlap Diaz. Whereas with the midfielders, we've got Thiago Alcantara, who was particularly influential with feints and long passing. This was influential at one time and space for his teammates, and also in covering for Simicast when he positioned higher, it allowed Liverpool to be able to switch the point of attack from left to right and Ajax congested that left hand side of the pitch. Harvey Elliott typically floated higher especially in deep build up than either of the other two centre midfielders. He sought to combine with Salah and Alexander Arnold on that right hand side and provided more of the runs the overlapping underlapping runs on that side especially with Salah kind of hugging the touchline. A loss of possession at Liverpool of course sought to counter press taking advantage of the fact that they have their full backs high their centre midfielders high and then to support this counter press one of the centre backs would go up to. Okay so after the substitution Nunez bolstered that aerial threat that the centre-backs were bringing on every Liverpool set-piece, but also Nunez and Diaz provided counter-attacking threat when Liverpool regained possession, with Alisson often looking to hit them early as they ran into the channels looking to split the Ajax defence. With these substitutions, Liverpool set up in a 2-3-5 or a 2-2-6, with the two centre-backs, Fabinho and Thiago, and then the rest of the players ahead of them. In the central space between the lines, playing as the centre-attacking midfielders were Firmino and Diaz, and then also centrally with them two but ahead of them were Nunez and Salah so Salah now wasn't holding his width anymore allowing the fullbacks to do that job instead and with that let's have a look at an example so we're starting here from an Ajax free kick Alvarez's position allows the other centre backs to be able to split Liverpool's press by the forwards is able to stay relatively narrow here with Alvarez as central centre back Taylor dropped into a CDM role the defensive unit varied their position to try and keep passing lanes open for the goalkeeper and their teammate on this occasion Pasvier showing his technical ability looks to try and chip it over Salah into Taylor blend unlike a goal kick from a dead ball situation Harvey Elliott here is tracking Bassi rather than looking to press out into the wide space as Thiago or himself would normally do to press a fullback. Salah's able to win the ball and from the subsequent throw in Bergwijn handles it. Liverpool look to play the ball around the back against the 4-2-3-1 shape of Ajax. Looking to take advantage of how narrow the far-sided forward is, Simicast pushes out as high and as wide as possible on the left hand side with Thiago looking to drop into a quasi left back position to try and help with circulation on that left hand side as well as provide cover. Liverpool circulate the ball on this right hand side initially with Harvey Elliott dropping to try and help build up on the right hand side. Eventually the ball is played to Van Dijk who's allowed to run 20 or 30 yards here on this left hand side because the Ajax players want to try and maintain their 4-2-3-1 shape and defend that central space. Eventually the Ajax players in Gage Van Dyke and Thiago circulates it back over to this right hand side and then Matip basically does the same as his centre back partner and here as he did throughout most of the game Matip was really clinical with his passes passes here through the lines into Jota who's dropped it's good to note also on the far side uh, Simicas and Diaz had swapped over earlier with Diaz dropping deeper allowing him more space on this left hand side with Simicas taking more of a forward position and trying to draw the Ajax players narrower and away from Diaz okay so with Jota dropping deeper he's looking to try and draw Bassett the centre-back out of his more traditional uh, centre-back position and create space between Timber and uh, Daily Blind for the likes of Harvey Elliott and Mo Salah to try and exploit. And so we see that continue on this right-hand side. Fortunately for Liverpool, Ajax are able to regain possession and quite comfortably amongst the defensive unit retain possession, despite Liverpool looking to try and counter-press. If you've enjoyed the content, consider giving it a like, sharing it on social media, or giving one of our playlists a watch. We're going to be tactically analysing the Women's Super League match on the weekend. So if you want a quick refresher, have a look at last season's analysis, or have a look at we'll have a look at our other Champions League and Premier League content and with that we're out